This is the second video on the series dealing with Trig General Solutions. And in this video, we're going to focus on type 1 and type 2 questions that we can be given. So if you think back to the previous video, there were five types of trig equations that you could be given. And the first one dealt with the fact where we had a different trig ratio. So in this case, sine and cos but the same angle. So we're thinking of it being different ratio, but same angle. Now, whenever you have a different ratio, but the same angle, the technique that you use to solve this is by using the identity that tan of theta is equal to sine of theta over cos of theta. Just be very careful, you have to have the same angle in each place. So the way that we go about solving for that, by looking at the question, we know we're going to need to get to tan. So we start off, what you could think of it as your first step maybe, is to get sine by itself on one side of the equation. So you would write 3 sine x, and then we're going to go ahead and move this minus 2 cos over to the right hand side. And when we do that, it's going to become positive 2 cos x. And now it's actually quite simple to solve because all we need to do, and this is what you will do in every one of these cases, is divide both sides of the equation by cos. You can see then that the cos x and the cos x will cancel out. And we will be left with, well, 3 and then sin x over cos x, which becomes tan x because of our identity. So it will become 3 tan x is equal to 2. And then we can get tan x by itself. And that is equal to 2 over 3. Remember, guys, that in every one of these cases, the goal or the objective we have is to get the ratio equal to a number. And what we've done now is we've got a ratio equal to a number. And the moment that happens, we can apply our general solution. So if you've got that written down, you'll remember that the general solution for tan is given as x is equal to the inverse tan of the number plus k times 180. So in this case, we will get x is equal to the inverse tan of 2 over 3 plus k times 180. Always make sure that you then write k is an element of integers somewhere around. This is incredibly important. And then we can simply use our calculator to solve. And so the solution will then be, if we go the inverse tan of 2 over 3, we will get 33.69. We always go to two decimal places. So we would get x is equal to 33.69 plus k times 180 degrees. And that's how we do it. So anytime you're left in a situation where you need to solve for x, all of these questions will say solve for x, you will start off by getting the sign by itself, then dividing both sides by cos, ensuring that you fulfill your goal and get the ratio equal to a number. And once you've done that, you use those general solutions that sort of gave us that linear sequence and then you can write out your general solution. Let's have a look then at another example where we're going to look at type 2 now. So this is now type 2. And in type 2, we established already that we're going to have the same ratio. So sine and sine, cos and cos, tan and tan. But the angle will be different. So we will have one angle and then a different angle one angle 
different angle, and so on. So if you look at the example below, you'll clearly see that we've got the same ratio. We've got cos and cos. And then we've got two different angles. We've got the angle 70 minus theta. And remember, whatever is inside the bracket, that entire thing is the angle. And then we've got 2 theta on the right-hand side. For the time being, don't worry too much about this that x is an element between 0 and 180. I'll come back to it in a minute. So, whenever this is the case, you can clearly see that we have equal ratios. And what that basically means for us is that we can go ahead and drop those ratios straight away. It's similar to the idea of I had something like 2 to the power of x equals 2 to the power of 4. Because we've got the same base, we could go ahead and equate the exponents. So it's exactly the same idea. And with that, we can therefore say that we can write the 70 minus theta as the first angle is equal to the second angle, which is 2 theta. But remember, this is a general solution. So if you remember back, the linear sequence that we have for the cos general solution, we had the plus minus in front, plus k times 360, where k is an element of integers. So basically what you need to do whenever you get to a case like this is simply drop the ratios, write the angles, the angles out, write the angles out, and once you've done that, you add in the details from your normal general solution equations. And then our job is simply to get theta by itself. So we're going to start off dealing with the plus, and then we'll deal with the minus. So when we're dealing with the plus, it's going to be 70 minus theta equals positive 2 theta plus k times 360 or 70 minus theta is equal to minus 2 theta plus k times 360. And then we're just going to go ahead and group our like terms. So we've got a theta and a theta. So if we bring that over, we're going to get minus 3 theta is equal to negative 70 when I take the 70 over, plus k times 360, or we're going to get the group like terms over here. We're going to get theta is equal to negative 70 plus k360 when I move that 70 over. And then just with this one over here, we will need to simplify it. And so it will become, we will divide every term by negative 3. Every term, so even the 360 needs to be divided by negative 3. And that will then give us, that will give us theta is equal to negative 3, 23.33 plus k times. And then we've got to divide 360 by 3. So 360 divided by 3 gives us 120. Just a bit of advice. The sign in the middle there doesn't actually matter whether it's plus or minus because we're plugging in integers into k. You'll remember from the previous video we would go 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, etc. And because we're going to go plus or minus, that sign in the middle doesn't matter. So if you'd like to make it a negative there, you're more than welcome to. The question though was, we need to find that solution in that domain. So anytime you see something like that, it's a domain. So we know that this function, it's a cos function, so it sort of looks a little bit like this. And we want to make sure that those solutions are between 0 and we want to make sure if that's 360, we want to make sure that the solutions are between there and there. So when we do that, what we have to do is basically plug in values of k and check does it fit in this domain. So basically, 
If we start, we would say theta equals, and then the first value you substitute in is zero. So it would be minus 23.33 plus zero for k now, times 120, and that would give us, and that would give us negative 23.33 as shown on the calculator there, and that does not fit between 0 and 180 because it's negative. So then we go back and we plug in a value of 1. And when we do that, that should be 120. And when we do that, we get the answer 96.67. And that does fit in the range. So you can fill it in. It fits between 0 and 180. So you'd write 96.67, put a semicolon in. And then we go and check with negative 1. So we're basically substituting in these values of 0, plus or minus 1, then plus or minus 2. And that would give us negative 143.33. does not fit in the range, so it's not a solution. Then we can move on and try positive 2. Check that. And we get... 216.67 again it's not in the range and from what we can see from here basically any value that we substitute in that's bigger than 2 is never going to fit into the domain that we've been given so the only solution between 0 and 180 for this equation is 96.67 so what you can take away from this is if you're given a question where they specifically say x is between these two numbers here then you need to substitute in integers for k on your calculator by simply typing it in like this and changing the number in front to 2 to 3 to 4 and so on and just checking whether or not it fits in the range and if it does fit in the range you write it down separated by a semicolon so that's type 1 and type 2 in the next video, we're going to move on at looking at the more complex examples now with type 3 and 4.